Hi, Mike Eben here with, well, a little bit of a different let's do the math. I know there's no way for you to realize this, but my last let's do the math was actually a bit of a milestone episode for me because at the conclusion of that episode, I had presented all of the formulas and all of the math that I use in this well, rather uh, messed up spreadsheet that I use almost all the time when I am playing Kerbal Space Program. Now, one of the things I thought of perhaps doing was maybe sharing this. I did think about this in the past. That's why I got into starting to put a little bit of information on here, what's going on. But this spreadsheet, like I think most spreadsheets, is a dynamic thing. I'm constantly adding things to it sometimes with little or no explanation I got stuff adding here I'm looking at this and although I'm not sure quite what's going on here <laughs> and so I start to forget what the heck it is that I'm doing so if I don't understand I mean if I go to my miscellaneous section there's like crap everywhere here I don't even know what's going on with half of this stuff so I don't know what's going half on with half of this stuff I'm certainly not going to present this for other people to use and I don't think it's really necessary because I think what is more useful than using somebody else's spreadsheet is making one of your own. And that's what I'm going to do in this episode. I'm going to be going over, assuming you've never worked with a spreadsheet program, and trust me, they're easier than they look. I'm going to show you how to take all of the math that we have done up until this episode and start to build your own spreadsheet that is personalized for your own play. Well, without any further delay, let's do the math. I started making this spreadsheet actually really early. Even its name is stupid. I put AA template with the AA at the front just so that it would always be towards the top if I listed them alphabetically. Um, and I just started making this thing because I realized that I needed to. And in fact, the very first page I made was this one, which is all about calculating delta Vs and thrust to math ratios. This is before I discovered there were a thing called Kerbal Engineer out there. But even with Kerbal Engineer, I use these other pages all the time. And I know you will too. So we're gonna talk about putting in actually two specific things. One is way back in episode two, I developed the VisViva equations and how to use them. These are the equations that you use all the time to calculate what are going to be the burn requirements in order to do all kinds of in-plane maneuvers in-game. That is probably the most common thing that I use on this spreadsheet. And the second thing I'm going to take a look at is what we've been talking about just most recently, which is how to calculate electricity demands. How much storage do you need and how much electrical generation that you need in your crafts. So I'm going to show you how to do those kind of things. And honestly, by the end of that, you're going to have the tools that you need in order to do basically any other kind of calculation you want to do in the spreadsheet. The spreadsheet program that I'm going to be using is Google Sheets. Why Google Sheets? I'm not trying to promote Google. Heck, my life is already wrapped up in Google like everybody else is too much as it is. But heck, let's face it, if you have a Google account, and you do, <laughs> then you have a Google Drive account and you have access to Google Sheets. Many of you would prefer, well, Microsoft Excel would be the biggest game that's out there. And there's absolutely nothing that I'm going to present that you can't do in pretty much exactly the same way in Microsoft Excel. In fact, if anything, there's tons of stuff you can do in Excel that you can't do in Google Sheets. But Google Sheets is nice and simple, so I think it's a good place for us to start. All right, so to get us started, we're going to go to my Google Drive. So I'm going to hit new here and we're going to create a new Google Sheet. There we are. We're going to give this a name. This is going to be my KSP helper. There we go. Okay. Now, first thing I'm going to put in here is the thing that I use the most calculating delta Vs within the plane using the vis viva equations. This goes all the way back to episode two where I derived these two formulas. And these are the two formulas that we're gonna put into our spreadsheet. And what we want is if I'm going to make an orbital change from one altitude to another altitude, these two formulas are gonna calculate for me how much 
uh, delta V that is going to cost. Now these formulas require some information that's actually always the same. The mu is the standard gravitational parameter for Kerbin. We're gonna do this starting off with Kerbin. So I want this number, I don't wanna have to put this number in again and again and again. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this number in once, we're gonna record it up to the top. I'm gonna call this mu and we need to go to the KSP wiki or look this up in the tracking station, but um, the standard gravitational parameter for Kerbin is 3.5316 times 10 to the 12. So we need to enter that. Now, you can enter that as a pile of digits. I'm going to enter in scientific notation. Now, I'm technically doing a calculation because there's this times 10 to the 12 business there. And in any kind of a spreadsheet, whenever you're not putting in just a raw number, but a calculation, you have to start off by putting an equal sign. This is pretty common in all spreadsheets. So my mu is going to equal 3.5316. Oops, I think I made no miss. There it is. <laughs> Make sure I do this right. Times 10 to the exponent 12. And we're gonna hit enter. And then it saves the number as a whole pile of digits. I could have typed it in like that, but that is not what I wanted to do. The other thing I need, because I'm not gonna work with orbital radii. When we are in game, the altimeter measures our distance from the surface of Kerbin, not from radius, not from the center of Kerbin. So we tend to, when we're playing KSB, think of orbits in terms of altitudes, not in terms of radii. So what I wanna do is I wanna record Kerbin's radii. So right here, I'm gonna put in Kerbin's radius. This is gonna come up a lot as well. And Kerbin's radius is 600,000 meters. There it is right there. Okay, so right here, we're gonna make ourselves um, our, a little spreadsheet to help us do these calculations. So the first thing we're gonna do is put in what our lower altitude is going to be. Lower altitude, there we go. There it is right there. And then what is going to be the higher altitude? Because which formula you use depends upon whether you're going from the lower to the higher, or the higher to the lower. We talked about that back in episode two. So let's say I wanna make a change from a 100 kilometer orbit to a thousand kilometer orbit. Notice that I'm automatically, without even thinking about it, talking in terms of kilometers. I don't know you, I don't know about you, but when I start talking about orbits in KSP, I think in terms of kilometers, not in terms of meters, even though the formulas require me to work in meters. We'll get to that in a second, but to remind me that I'm working in kilometers, I'm gonna put the units on here. Kilometers, there we go. And this one is in also kilometers. Now, what's inside the cell is getting a little bit bigger than what the cell can deal with. So what I'm gonna do is just widen that cell just a little bit and we'll widen this cell just a little bit. Great, okay, next. We need to calculate what's going to be our first burn. In order to do this uh, maneuver, we need to do a burn at our lower altitude and then do a second burn at our higher altitude. And it's those vis viva equations that calculate this for me. So we need to enter this in. Okay, we're gonna do a calculation. So we're gonna start with an equal sign. First thing we need to do according to formula is to do a square root. And SQRT is pretty much the universal in spreadsheets and programming languages for a square root uh, that you get. And notice as I'm typing that, some options actually come up as what's going on. And uh, SQRT, it this is telling me that Google Sheets recognizes what SQRT is. I can just, I could have just hit enter or I can hit that little thing there and it puts that in for me. And then I need a bracket. What am I gonna take the square root of? Well, it's going to be mu divided by the lower radius. Okay, mu, I don't wanna type this number in again, so what I just have to do now is click on the cell where I have mu stored, and you can see that that cell's address has just popped in there. So uh, C2, it's in row C, column two. If you play Battleship, you already know how this works. Okay, we're gonna divide this by this lower radius. Now keep in mind, I got a couple, it's not just 100, and it's not 100,000 because that's an altitude. We need to add on the radius of Kerbin so that we're measuring the distance from Kerbin center. So we're gonna put another bracket here. We're gonna take this 100, we're going to multiply that by a thousand, that now converts it to meters. So now it's 100,000 meters, which is what it needs to be for this formula. And we're gonna add on Kerbin's radius of 600,000 meters. Again, I'm not gonna type in that number. Instead, 
I'm going to just click on the number in its appropriate cell. And again, the cell address pops up here. We're going to close that bracket and then we're going to close the a bracket again. One thing to be very careful for is your brackets. The brackets have to match. Notice it's helping us a little bit by kind of uh, highlighting these brackets. This bracket's the one that goes with this bracket. So it's taking the square root of all of this stuff. We then need to multiply that by, so we gotta hit times, times is the asterisk once again, another bracket, another square root, type in SQ, click on that for the rest of it. And then it's gonna be two times uh, radius number two. So that is our second, I think I'm gonna need a bracket again, our second altitude or higher altitude times a thousand once again to convert it to meters plus the radius of Kerbin. We need to take that result. We need to divide that by the sum of the two orbital radii. So we need to work with both of these together. So it's this one, again, times a thousand to convert it to meters, plus this Kerbin's radius distance um, to make it an orbital radii, and then plus the other one, a thousand, times a thousand again to convert it to meters plus Kerbin's orbital radii and then we need to close that that closes off this bracket then we need to close off another bracket that closes off this division and then we need to subtract one according to our formula and then we need one more bracket to close which closes off the um, the whole thing that this is being multiplied by and it looks really complicated once you've typed it all out i'm the first one to admit that so definitely you want to make sure that this is correct calculating something correctly for you but when i hit enter it's telling me that it's 403 a bunch of change we'll deal with how to deal with the change in just a little bit and if i go back to my spreadsheet that i already made i'd already actually typed it in you know, where is it kerbin I have an old an altitude of 100 to 1,000 should cost me in my first burn 403 meters per second. Excellent, working great. Okay, let's do the next one. So now we're using our second this Viva equation. This is burn two. Okay, we're gonna use our second this Viva equation. So again, we're doing a calculation. So we start with an equal sign, SQRT. And there we go, that is a completely reasonable answer all right now this is it so now if i want to make any kind of within kerbin sphere of influence do any kind of calculation like let's say for instance i'm in an 80 kilometer orbit and i would like to go to the moon which is in a 12,000 kilometer orbit it tells me that the first burn i need to make is 860 meters per second which if we go and take a look at that uh, delta v map that many of you but if you're watching this video or very familiar with is what it tells you it has to be so you can you know you can do all kinds of stuff here um to help you calculate what the costs of all of these things are going to be let's clean this up. and you know what let's not do the cleanup yet let's go into doing something else and we'll clean this all up make it look a little bit better at the end of the video the other thing i wanted to talk about is calculating electricity needs so actually why don't i notice i never did put a title in here so i'm going to insert a row below there we go and we're gonna give this a title this is uh, Delta B or orbit changes there we go so now what we want to do is make another thing actually we'll do now we'll do it below you can organize yours the way you want <laughs> we want to calculate um, how much um, electricity needs were going to be. One of the first things we did was we calculated how much time we should expect to be in the dark. And that was using this formula. So let's, uh, we're going to put this formula in. Now, again, we got, if you take a look at the formula, the mu is the same mu as, as the mu up here. So we don't need to worry about that again. The uppercase R in that formula is Kerbin's radius. We've already taken care of that. So we don't need any more numbers up here that we need to take calculate of. So this is going to be dark time that we're going to calculate. We'll give it a little bit of a title here. And what we want to do is, let's see here, we're going to be putting in, well, it's actually simply the altitude of our orbit, isn't it? So altitude. Again, I'm going to work in kilometers. Okay. 
and we're gonna start let's see here we'll imagine we're in a hundred and twenty kilometer orbit I always you want, always want to put a number in there to get you started and here we're gonna calculate how much time to spend in the dark so dark time just realize I'm using not dark time but dark time in the same title but we'll fix that okay so we're gonna do a calculation we're gonna use the formula over there on the right so to calculate the dark time it starts well obviously with an equal sign and then two and then times and then the square root you'll use the square root a lot in these things we then need to multiply that by the inverse sign now the inverse sign in most computer languages and spreadsheet is the arc sign uh, but you can see here it's not coming up as one of my options so i'm going to back up a little bit let's try a sign there it is right there and if i hold on it you can see how it gives me a little bit of an it tells me what it is this is the inverse sign of a value whoops in radians and it needs to be in radians for this to work so i need the a sign that's how we're going to do this of the radius of kerbin whoops i realized i put in one too many brackets the radius of kerbin 600 thousand divided by once again our orbital radius which is this distance times a thousand uh plus the 600,000 and we close that off to close the denominator that off to close off the inverse sign and that one just for this bracket which I'm now looking at was not necessary but oh well and <laughs> we'll hit enter here and that gives us 641 seconds we can expect to be in the dark the other thing we needed to know was how much time we were going to expect to find in the light so we're going to call this light time to calculate the light time, we take our orbital period, which is this formula right here. It's a little bit more simple. And we're going to calculate, uh, and then we subtract off how much time we spend in the dark. So again, we start with an equal sign. We go with two. Okay, so that's my orbital period. What I need to do with that then is simply subtract the amount of time we're spending in the dark. Do that. And there's the amount of time we're spending in the light. Okay, next, um, we need to be able to sum up electrical, uh, how much electrical stuff we're going to be using. So, I'm going to create a column here that is going to be uh, electrical usage. And simply, this is for uh how much stuff that you have on there like say for instance you got the science bay or the science lab that thing may be draining five units of electric charge per second you got a bunch of lights well this is looking all too familiar <laughs> you got that on there i don't know say you got some other stuff say there's 1.5 units of electric charge being used up for something else i'm just putting in a bunch of numbers here and what i want to do is i want to add all of these numbers up Okay, so down here at the bottom, we're going to type in the equal sign again, and we're going to type in sum. See how it says sum there. Now, the way the sum works is you put in a range of values. So I'm going to click the first value, and then I'm actually going to extend past, because perhaps in the future I might add in some more things. I'm going to go all the way down to here. I'm going to hit to there, and it's going to sum all the values from cell B14 to B19. I'm going to close that bracket off, hit enter, and it's just simply added those numbers up. Now what I should do is actually write the word in here uh, total because this number is here without any kind of explanation. And now I'm right down to the very left of my spreadsheet. I don't typically like being to the very, very edge of a spreadsheet. I like to always have a cell, I don't know, it's like a buffer or something. So I'm going to insert a column to the left and that just shifts everything over. And by the way, all the cells all changed appropriately in these formulas when I did that. So there is my total electrical usage. The next thing I want to do is work out, well, how much night drain is that going to turn into so below here I'm gonna type night drain and that comes out to be simply equal to this amount of usage that we're gonna be times the amount of time we're going to be in the night so just times this number 
and that's going to be the amount of electricity we're going to use during the night. The next thing we want to do is work out how much generation that we're going to need. I'm going to type in required generation down here. That's going to be that one right there. And remember how the required generation works. It's going to equal the amount that you drain in the night divided by the amount of time you're going to be in the light that now calculates how much um, generation required to recharge your batteries plus the total amount that you use up over the course of just running your equipment. And if we enter that, we have now that number. So now what we have is some, some nice things here. We have, you know, a place for us to add in uh, what electricity we're gonna use. It shows us how much the, the total is gonna be, how much we can expect to drain during the night, and what is the required generation that we have so that I have some idea of how much battery storage I am going to need. Obviously we can go deeper into this, but I think you are getting the idea of how this is going to work. The last thing I wanna do is I want to clean this all up just a little bit because I don't know, right now it's looking a little bit messy. Things are kind of all over the place. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna select all of these guys, make this a little nicer. We're gonna hit bold. We're gonna make them bolder, okay? We're gonna take all of these titles, we'll shift hit all of them. We're going to center those right here into in their cells. Now, these cells here are again a little bit tight after I bolded it, so I'm just going to increase the width of these cells just a little bit. There we go, like that. I'm also going to center these numbers. To me, center just looks a little bit nicer like that. And now, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use some borders to try and make a bit of a, make this a little nicer. So I'm gonna kick the borders icon over here and I want to do the whole outside like that. Actually, I'm going to fill in all the inside as well. So now we're starting to clean this up a little bit. It's starting to look a little bit nicer. The other thing I'm noticing, I don't like all of these decimal places. I don't care about all of these decimal places. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on both of those and I'm going to go up to format and I'm going to go to number and there are all kinds of preset ones. You can actually set it to do anything that you want but right here i'm noticing zero decimal places click on that that immediately looks nicer now the spreadsheet's still keeping track of all your decimal places so it's still calculating in a reasonably accurate way but it's only displaying you the final answers like that okay. uh let's do the same thing here with dark time so this is dark time i'm gonna bold that we're gonna take these two guys we're gonna bold that we're gonna do that we're gonna do that uh, this actually is not exactly, this is dark and light time. <laughs> Change our title here a little bit. Cap lock on. There we go. We're going to center all of these numbers. Going to round these guys. Uh, format number, there we go. To zero, there we go. So that looks a little bit nicer. You can actually, I've noticed this has not got any units on it, so I can type that's in seconds, that's in seconds, and I guess these burns here are also in meters per second. How about you, but I like units. We have electrical usage here. We have all of these numbers. Now, I'm gonna change this structure a little. I'm just gonna put, whoops, wrong thing. Just gonna put the border on the outside, but then I'm gonna select this one and just put a line underneath like that. And by the way, you can adjust, that's for color. This is for border style. I, these seemed a little bit dim to me. Let's see if we can, a little bit thin. There we go, I like that. Eh, well, I guess it's all personal, isn't it? <laughs> what you like and what you don't like. Let's see, let's uh, select, let's not go quite as heavy as that, like that. And then, oh, and I like that thinner line here. That shows, you know, that you've made a total here. These guys here will bold. And these two here, we will go like that. How heavy are these ones? 
Whoops. That's looking all right. So you're starting to clean this up a little bit. So you can start to see how you can start to clean this up. And this is where it really starts to become personal. Okay. What I want to do for one last thing is this is all working for Kerbin, but of course if I go someplace else, this is not working for me so much. And a common place, for instance, that I might be going is I might be going to the moon. So what I'm going to do is instead of creating more of these and doing myself a ton of work, the moon's going to have a lot of the same kind of calculations going on. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new sheet that's going to have very much the same sort of structure as this. So here's how we do that. First of all, I'm going to click on this sheet and we're going to name this, uh, rename it, and I'm going to give it a name, Kerbin. And then we're going to take this sheet and we're going to make a copy of it. And we're going to copy it to the existing spreadsheet. Oh, that's not working. Try that again. Duplicate. That's what I want to do. And so now it's created a new sheet right beside it that's exactly the same. This one I'm going to calculate and or kind of call it for the moon. Okay, now so far this is exactly the same. So you might be going, well, that's no good. But remember, this is where the real advantage came up with storing this key information up here. All that's gonna change between Kerbin and the moon are these two numbers. So if I just go up here, I'll change this now to the moon's radius. The new gravitational parameter for the moon is 6.513839. times 10 to the 10 boom and you can see that that percolated down and changed all these other numbers that were being calculated and the moon's radius is not 600,000 meters but 200,000 meters and with that simple change I now have a working for I don't have to change anything else in here to calculate well I'm not going to get to that kind of an altitude around the moon 12,000 kilometers. because I don't think the moon's sphere of influence is that big but I now have this delta V for orbital changes formula working for the moon um, I have this day night cycle stuff I just realized I should have put some borders around that too Oops. there day night time stuff um, but this is now working for the moon I don't have to do anything else to it and this electrical generation electrical usage stuff is also working now for around the moon I don't have to change anything else and you can see how easy it is to keep building on this making ones for different body or to be in different spheres of influence I don't think I need to go on more than what we have I mean if you have a formula and you've seen what I've just done here, then you can make yourself your own spreadsheet. I don't know about you, but for me, I don't play KSP without having this open beside me. Well, not this one, obviously, this monstrosity <laughs> open beside me so that I can be working these things out on the fly and not having to constantly be pulling out my calculator. Anyway, bit of a different, let's do the math. I suspect many of you know all about spreadsheets, but I'm hoping for many of you, this is something new and will encourage you to kind of dive in on this on your own. In the meantime, I thank you for watching and hope to see you again next time.